Between the late 90s and early 2000s, a notorious scammer of Nigeria origin named Emmanuel Wude masterminded one of the largest bank scams in history against a Brazilian bank named Banco Noreste. The scam that swindled the Brazilian bank of a whopping sum of $242 million was later exposed. What happened next will leave you questioning reality and the length people will go to for unimaginable riches. It all began in 1995 when Emmanuel Uwunde impersonated Paul Oguma, the then Central Bank of Nigeria's governor, and called Nelson Sakaguchi, a senior executive at a Brazilian bank, Banco Noreste. Uwunde told Nelson that the Nigeria government is currently looking for investors to invest in an airport project in the country's capital city, Abuja. The estimated cost of the project was about $250 million. Owunde, who was impersonated the then Central Bank governor, convinced Nelson to take advantage of the investment opportunity as its potential was great. He gave Nelson the impression that the offer was for a limited time because they were presenting the same opportunity to other banks around the world. Being a senior executive of Banco Noreste, Sakaguchi knew that an airport project in a cosmopolitan city like Abuja was a lucrative opportunity that guaranteed return on investment within a short time. But he was hesitant. He felt something was not right. He was wondering why the Central Bank of Nigeria's governor singled Banco Noreste out for the offer. As these endless thoughts were going through Nelson's mind, there was a long silence in the phone conversation. Just then, Ounde made him an offer that he couldn't resist. He told him that as the bank manager facilitated the deal, Nelson Sakaguchi would get a commission of $10 million if the deal is successful. Damn! This was when Nelson compromised his good judgment, the need for due diligence, background investigation, and other important stuff. The thought of what he could do with $10 million made him forget his years of professional training and experience. <laughs> so, he became very excited about the investment opportunity. He knew the investment may be a bit risky, but he encouraged himself that the higher the risk, the higher the return. After all, he wasn't investing his money, it was the bank's money. He immediately started the procedure. But what Nelson Sakaguchi didn't know was that the person he was speaking with from the other end of the phone was not actually Paul Okuma, the then CBN governor. The person was Emmanuel Owunde, an imposter and a notorious karma who was on a mission to swindle Banco Noreste hundreds of millions of dollars. In reality, Emmanuel Owunde has no business or whatsoever in building an airport. In fact, there was no airport project anywhere. So everything was scripted to swindle Banco Noreste through its senior executive Nelson Sakagoshe. But wait, who exactly was Emmanuel Owunde and how was he able to pull this type of high-level fraud. Actually, as of then, Emmanuel Wunde was a director of Union Bank of Nigeria. As a director of a commercial bank in Nigeria, Emmanuel was wealthy as he belonged to the upper middle class. But he was over ambitious. He wanted more. He wanted to be more. He wanted to be among the top 1% of the society. So the quest to make unimaginable wealth made Emmanuel conceptualize the idea of scamming big financial institutions by offering them the opportunity to invest in the fake or imaginary airport in the federal capital territory. Being a director of a bank, Emmanuel Owunde was privy to some links, information and documents that other persons would not be aware of. So it was easy for him to get all the information he needs to make the scam work. To make this great scam idea work, Emmanuel formed a team of five of his most trusted associates who were bankers and experienced financial experts. His team members who were accomplices to the crime were Emmanuel Folue, Nzeribe Okole, Christian Ikeshuku Anajemba, and Amaka Anajemba. 
They drew up a detailed blueprint and made every little detail airtight and gave no room for doubt. With their experience in the banking sector, it was very easy for them to impersonate some of the most influential people in the Nigeria banking sector. So, Emmanuel and his team started sending faxes to some of the most reputable commercial banks around the world. They prepared well-crafted and spell-casting official letters under the pretense that the letters were from the office of the Director of Planning and Budget of the Federal Ministry of Aviation. The content of the letter was that the Nigeria Aviation Ministry was looking for investment into massive airport to be constructed in the newly established Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. The letters were sent to several commercial banks, including Banco Noreste, and the Noreste Bank's manager, Nelson Sakaguchi, received a copy of the letter addressed to his bank. Coincidentally, Banco Noreste was already seeking opportunities to invest in infrastructures in developing countries. So, this was like a dream came true for the bank, and the fact that the letter had Nigeria's government letterhead and phone numbers boosted its credibility. But in reality, they were all fake. So, Nelson Sakaguchi immediately replied to the letter and expressed his bank's interest to invest in the airport and requested to speak with whoever was in charge. This was where Emmanuel Uwunde came in and acted his first character, the CBN governor. He impersonated the central bank of Nigeria's governor and spoke with Nelson Sakaguchi, who was convinced about the investment opportunity after Emmanuel offered him a $10 million commission if the deal pulled through. After this phone call, Nelson was eager to kickstart the process, so he requested a meeting with the project stakeholders so that some other details can be discussed. He gave Emmanuel Owunde the option to either meet in Nigeria or Brazil. However, Emmanuel was able to convince him that the Nigeria government wants to keep the project confidential for now as it won't start until the next few years. He suggested that they meet in a place that is far from Nigeria and Brazil, so they agreed to meet in London. Emmanuel and his team all impersonated some influential people in Nigeria, including CBN governor, deputy CBN governors, and officials from the Aviation Ministry. Emmanuel Wunde and his team of frosters prepared themselves very well for the meeting. They even went with a plan for the airport, documents of the land it will be located at, other crucial documentations to convince Nelson Sakaguchi. When they got to London, they lodged in a luxurious five-star hotel and sent a limousine to pick Sakaguchi from the airport. So, during their meeting, Emmanuel and his crew all introduced themselves according to the characters they were playing, and Sakaguchi believed everything. After all, during this time, there was nothing like the internet, Google, or any other online resources to verify all the characters they played. So, Emmanuel discussed the airport plan, business plan, and the proposed location of the airport. But of course, everything was a lie. So, Emmanuel told Sakaguchi that even though the project won't start immediately, they needed money to put the plan in motion. They needed to start getting the necessary permit, buy materials, and put other important details in place. At this point, Sakaguchi was convinced beyond reasonable doubt and promised Emmanuel that he would discuss with the bank management to invest in the project. However, before the end of the meeting, Emmanuel told Sakaguchi to transfer the sum of $3 million to confirm Banco Noreste's commitment to the project. Because of the fear of losing the amazing opportunity, Sakaguchi sent the first $3 million. And that, my friends, was when he fell into Emmanuel and his accomplices trap. At this point, Sakaguchi kept sending Emmanuel millions of dollars. Between 1995 and 1998, Sakaguchi kept sending money to Emmanuel and his team for an airport project that was not in existence. Guess what? Nelsi Sakaguchi didn't involve the management of Banco Noreste about the airport investment project and the money he had been sending. He secretly did everything without the approval from the bank management. He was quietly sending the money in a way that would raise suspicion. He sent the money through different countries into different accounts in a way that would alert his bank manager. And being a bank director himself, it was easy for Emmanuel Monde to launder the money without alerting the authority. 
So within three years, Nelson Sakaguchi transferred a sum of $242 million to Emmanuel and his crew. During this period, Emmanuel kept sending fake documents, pictures, contracts, etc. to convince Sakaguchi that the airport project was progressing. Because Emmanuel and his team were smart financial experts, they immediately invested the money they got from Sakaguchi. They invested in stocks, real estate and other viable investments. So they were able to conceal this huge fraud for a while. Emmanuel and his team almost got away with this car, but there was a twist in the event. Something unexpected happened. The largest bank in Spain, Santander Bank, made a move to acquire Bank Onoreste. When Santander Bank made an offer to buy Banco Noreste, the bank management initially expressed their approval. Since it was a big acquisition, Santander Bank had to review Banco Noreste assets in order to evaluate its value. Surprisingly, it was discovered that about one third of Banco Noreste's capital was missing. The board immediately summoned Nelson Sakaguchi to explain to them what happened to the missing capital. He told the board that he concluded a huge investment deal with the Nigerian government to invest in an airport construction project in the capital city in Abuja. He further told the board that for the past three years, he had transferred a total of $242 million. But the board didn't believe what he had said. They thought he was joking as the board didn't grant approval for such investments. The management team were furious and immediately formed a committee to investigate the investment for a clearer picture of what actually happened. After months of tracking transactions initiated by Nelson Sakaguchi, the money was tracked to Nigeria, but the committee was unable to get the true identity of the people who received the money. This lingered for a while until Swiss Bank pressured Nigerian banks to cooperate with them to reveal the true identities of the scammers. So Nigeria banks cooperated and eventually revealed the identity of Emmanuel and his crew. Unfortunately, nothing was done to them as Emmanuel and his crew were still moving freely. However, when the Economy and Financial Crime Commission EFCC, was established in 2003 by the former president Olusegu Obasanjo. Emmanuel Wunde's fraud case against the Brazilian bank was one of the first to be visited. So all members of the gang were arraigned before an Abuja High Court on 86 counts of fraudulently seeking advance fees and 50 counts of bribery related to the case. Although they pleaded not guilty, they were warned not to attempt to bribe court officials as it was suspected that money was going round. But one of Emmanuel's crew members, Amaka, confessed to helping Anna Jemba and was asked to repay $25 million and also sentenced to two years and a half in jail. Uunde attempted to bribe Nukuribado, the then chairman of the EFCC, with $75,000 cash, but Ribado refused and Uunde was charged with attempted bribery as well as attempting to kidnap a prosecuting witness. Following Sakaguchi's witness, Uwunde finally pleaded guilty and was sentenced to five concurrent sentences of five years and was asked to pay $10 million fine to the federal government. He was released in 2006. What do you think about this story? Kindly share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you.